Hi, this is Robert Bolaños. In this episode, I'm going to go over a microcap a simulator, which is now free. You can go to the Spectrum website and you can uh, download it. And it's a pretty good uh, simulator. It's a uh, pretty powerful and one of the things that it uh, that I've been using it for is to model or simulate uh, inductors okay and it actually has a uh, core models already built in into its library and if you select the core models then what it does it allows you to use uh, the core uh, parameters such as the AE, the LE and the gap okay so these are very important parameters and they're really uh, I guess you can call them physical parameters because they're based on the physical uh, structure of your core. Now for those that don't know what AE is, AE is the effective uh, area of the core and in uh, microcap when you enter the effective area you have to put them in units of centimeters squared. So that's the, the convention uh, that you use. And then for LE, that is the effective length path of your core. So in this case, the units are centimeters squared. And you might ask, well, where do you get these? Well, actually, you get them for your data sheet, the data sheet of your core. And in the example that I'm going to be using, I am using the T38. Okay, so this is a real life example. This is one of the cores that I use. And it's actually a toroid. Okay, I use a toroid because I had to uh, design a special flyback with very low capacitance. And I had to use a toroid. So let's take a look at uh, the data sheet and this is the data sheet and I'm using a core from TDK and here's the part number and the two parameters that you're looking for are AE and LE. Uh, LE. So these two are the main parameters that you're going to be looking for. Okay, so those are the ones, and let's take a look at quickly at. Uh, let me turn that off, and and here I have an example of the core. Uh, you would put a inductor. On your schematic, you would uh, come to the components, and you would get uh, you you, lo you would look up a uh, an inductor in the passive elements, and then you also look for uh, the K. And once you select the K, you can insert it there. Okay. Now, once you have the core uh, selected. Uh, what you do is uh, you type in what the name of it will be in this case I put LPR and then you type in the coupling coefficient in this case I'm just modeling the primary for now okay and then here where it says model if you notice this lights up see so all of these are different core materials there are in the library there's n there's t's there's the uh 
let's see what other the three three F three is what we use. Three uh, F three is the one that we uh, use for space. F four, three F thirty five, and forty five. Okay, so the one that I'm using for this uh, specific uh, is a T thirty eight, which I have there. And then I want to show this part. If you notice, this says path. Well, the, actually, that's the LE. Okay. And if you notice right here, when I hover, it says centimeters uh, is the length, is the units. Then if you go up here, this is the area. This would be the AE. So AE, and this is LE. And then here, if you notice, the gap is zero. So since it's a toroid, it does not have a gap. Okay. So now, let's go back to the data sheet. So if you notice, the units are in millimeters. So I have to convert them to centimeters. And here are the conversion. So LE is... 4.33 centimeters and AE is 0.3363 centimeters so okay and I can open up that and if you notice, uh, go back to T38. If you notice here, I already have the path as 4.33, which is this here. And then the area is 0 0.3362 centimeters squared. And the gap, I left it at zero. Okay. So we we basically have defined the the uh, core parameters. Now, the way you use this is once you tell what inductors are associated, in other words, this would be uh, L pry, that means that this inductor, which is named L pry, is associated with this uh, core. And let's say you have another uh, let, let's say, for example, we're going to make a, a semiconductor, uh, not a semiconductor, a transformer. Let's say I have another uh, secondary here. Okay. And if you notice, this is L1 and this is LPR. So you have to link this core to both this inductor and this inductor and the way you do that is you under here inductors you type in the inductors that will be associated with that core so in this case I would put L1 and that's it so now this core is linked to this inductor and this inductor okay now, the next thing that is very crucial is when you double click on the inductor, here where it says inductance, instead of putting a value, you actually put the number or turns that you will be using. So in this case, this inductor has seven turns. Okay. So I type in seven turns. Now, I'm not going to be using this, so I'm going to go ahead and delete it. I just want to show how to model first, and then on, an, on another video, I'll, I'll show how the the transformer works. But right now, we're just modeling uh, the this inductor with this core. Okay, so everything's pretty much set up. Okay, so now what we're going to do is, Uh, we take a look here. This is the 
a sub l of the core for a t38 and I know I have seven turns okay and what you do is you multiply the I, uh, AL a sub L times your turns okay so in this case 7 squared will be 49 the T is the turns they cancel so you end up with 477 microhenry. So this would be the inductance ungapped. Okay. And then we're going to see whether how close to that do we get. So in this case I'm going to put approximately 11 volts and I'm doing that uh, with this pulse. I'm putting 11 volts and I'm going to pulse it for 4 microseconds which is right there, 4 microseconds. Okay, and, uh, and then I'm going to measure the delta uh, uh, current. So if I measure the delta current I should be able to calculate the inductance, the L of the inductor that I'm modeling. So you'll see what, I, uh, what I'm trying to do. So I'll go ahead and press simulate. Okay, so here this is my input voltage and let me put both side by side okay so this is the input voltage of this uh, voltage source and it turns on to 11 and it's on for 4 microseconds and during that time the, I'm measuring the current that is flowing through the primary so this is a current and if you notice right there it goes up to about 108 108 milliamps okay so we have that now the interesting thing that you can also can do is you can plot the flux density or the the gauss so in this case you can see that as your current goes up the gauss level goes up okay and this is really good because with this model you can actually see if your current or your inductor is saturating okay so how do I do that well typically you can you can see it in your current uh, waveform. You'll see it if you notice this is relatively straight but as you saturate the inductor saturates then this curve starts ramping upward. In other words the current goes up very very fast. So how do we simulate that? Okay so what we're going to do is we're going to increase the time Okay, so let's go ahead and increase this to 8 to double the time. And if you notice, there you go. Okay, you can see that it's curving. Okay, another check that you can do is for a typical uh, ferrite core. B set is around 0 0.3 Teslas or Gauss. Okay, so basically, once you hit about 3000 Gauss, 
is when you start to uh, see uh, saturation. So basically, if you look here, if you, this is 2,000, 3,000. If you point, you can see that it starts deflecting once it goes above 3,000 uh, Teslas. So this is pretty pretty neat that you can see it's saturating already okay and if you notice the current is swinging up even further so let's go up a little further let's go 10 uh, microseconds so now it's gonna this will elongate and now if you notice it's really saturating with uh, 10. Let me go back and maybe go back to 9 so you see it a little bit more. So, see, it's so this is pretty much linear, and then at about 3, right there at the corner of that knee, is when it really goes up and uh the current really goes up so basically the inductor stops being an inductor it's basically a short okay and this is pretty neat in that the core uh tells you or is able shows your actually saturation okay so now let's go back we'll go back to four mm -hmm. Okay, so now we can go ahead and plot here. This shows that it's about 108. And that's what I measured, 108. And I'm putting 11 volts. So the impedance, or not the impedance, but the inductance of this ungapped core in the simulator we're measuring about 407 okay if you use the a sub l and you multiply it into seven uh the seven turns it tells you that it's going to be 477 microhenry that's so this is pretty close to what you calculate using the data sheet so they're they're pretty close in agreement okay so let's work on a different example let's say that you want a specific inductance and let's say you want to use this particular core okay so here's another example so how about a, a gap core okay so here are uh, the design parameters let's say I want a inductor of 47 microhenries Okay, so once I know what my my uh, turns rate, uh, not turns ratio, but uh, the actual number of turns. In this case, it's seven. And then here is my uh, mu sub o and a e in the inductors and all the parameters. So here's the formula. So this is the the length of the gap that I would need to uh, make sure that I have an inductor that's 47 micro uh, Henry's so this is the design uh, desired design inductance so if I want that then I would have to gap the toroid basically I would cut the toroid in half and then I could either put shims or put uh, put in a little jig where you can separate and you can dial it in uh, if you want or if you are able to get this type of accuracy then you can uh, put a shim with that type but anyway uh, so how do I simulate that okay well then I'll go to back to the model and I type in where it says gap I put in 00388 make sure point zero zero three eight eight yes so now 
I'm going to go ahead and run it and then I'm going to measure the delta that way I can extract what the inductance is so in this case we have 11 volts okay and let's see this is approximately 927 934 934 so here I put 934 milliamps and the time is 4 microseconds so the inductance is 47 microhenry so what do you know I was able to get a gapped inductor at 47 and this a uh, model is able to predict now whether I'm saturating during let's say the use oh during the startup condition so anyway I think this is uh, pretty powerful I think uh, knowing how to set it up is uh, crucial and knowing how to enter these uh, uh, physical parameters is uh, a pretty neat way of uh, simulating your inductors. Anyway, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, email them at my email address and uh, I'll try to answer them. Uh, if you like this video and you found it uh, informative, uh, share, subscribe, and give me a thumbs up. Thank you for watching.